There you go. All right, today we're working on these cans. And more specifically, they are all clean. We're gonna be working on the timing. And then we're gonna be working on the last pieces that go in, which would be these 6,000 shim washers. So, according to the Bible, How to Restore Your Harley Davidson by Bruce Palmer. This is out of print, I believe. I got mine off eBay. This was like 200 bucks, but holy shit, it's worth it. So much good information in here. In a different form, there's this one, which was free online. So, works good for this engine only. The 45 flathead. In these, we have what they described as the shim washers. And coming out of factory, there was generally one behind each. So between the back end of each one and the cam case. So you see here I have the original ones, which I'm gonna be replacing. And two on the fronts of the first two. This one didn't receive any, the idler gear that goes up to the generator, which is over here. That didn't receive any. So we won't be worrying about that. But let's remove these, put a towel down. Move these one by one and we'll work on the timing. And we'll put the new washers in. See? So there was three washers when I found this engine. Uh, behind uh, one, behind this gear, this gear, and this gear. This gear, the drive for the oil pump, did not have one. Which doesn't seem all that bad, but each one really should have one according to the book. See, this one didn't have one stock. I did have one um, when I opened it up. Here we can see the original one. Sorry. The original ones that came off. Even after cleaning them, there's some slight corrosion on them. If you had nothing else, they'd probably would be okay to run. But I ordered new ones and they were really cheap. That was like 20 cents each. So ordered brand new ones for the whole set. I'm gonna be using those. You do wanna make sure that when you install them that there's no binding or anything. But beyond that, there's no real problem. So first thing we gotta do when setting the timing is setting the timing for this breather tube and that uh, connects to the oil pump. So we grab the book and double check how we set that timing. All right, first thing we're gonna do is check these washers. Make sure it doesn't bind when we put the cover on. So just in general, we're gonna put a fresh washer on each one. I'm not gonna worry about greasing them at the moment because we'll grease them before we put it in for the final time. So each one gets one, bind it. And the idler gear it goes in one way. You can see here. You see right there? It's stepped up now. That means I have it in backwards. So if you take it off, flip it, now it's flush here. So that's the right way to put this on. All right, now we have all the gears in. Then the front two get an extra. Alright, then we want to put 
special cover on and lock it with the gasket. And before I go any farther, actually, I'm going to go grab the screws. I'm going to clean them, and then we're going to get back to this. All right. Here we are. All right, so finished cleaning the cam chest bolts. I have all the washers placed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the gasket on, the cam chest cover on, and then bolt it down, just hand snug enough. And then I'm going to pull the engine along and try to feel if there's any resistance or any issues with that. You wanna know if it's binding anywhere because these shims are too big or such. Or conversely, if you need more shims because it's not enough, because they're too loose. All right, so I don't have the oil pump on, which is Important for this because the oil pump has its own friction associated with it. And let's trap the gasket. There you go. Here's a gasket. Not going to worry about gasket seal or anything. Just going to put it on. Oops, bumped you a little. Just going to put it on. Get a couple bolts through. And get it on the dowels, actually. Don't want to worry about putting a bolt on it. So I'll take this, put it on the dowels. There, there, and here. There. There. And there. All right, now we can take this, place these on the dowels as well. Gotta fit them in to their bushings. And this should tap on the gentle mallet. around one that's a, a generator bolt hole push back out there we go that's the right one just go around and uh, place your bolts snug them all down and then give it a try feel for the resistance Snugged up now, you want to see how much resistance there is. Actually spins this way.
think I'll remove the two front ones. And uh, see how that feels. This feels pretty much all right. Now I'm realizing I shouldn't have installed these tappet blocks first. I should have had these second and then I could check the side to side play on them. Uh, that's all right. Okay. All right, I'm gonna unbutton it and I think I'm gonna remove those two front ones. one of the washers here it is all right well, I'm gonna remove this washer and the washer off the other one which would be this one take that washer off as well so I'm thinking reinstall and check it again but I think it'll be just fine so let's go with the timing now. So I'll we'll take this cam out, put it off for the moment. So let me grab my assembly lube and work on the timing. All right, I brought you around back because we have to put the engine at the timing mark. So what that means is that in this viewport here, how do you see? There it is. That little line on the flywheel, you can see through that hole, that's the timing mark. And we want that centered in this inspection hole. So, with that centered, with that centered, we can come to the front now and being careful not to move this side to side. Take some calipers or a ruler or anything that you can at least get a good measurement with. And we want to put the face of this gear 5 sixteenths off of the face here. So I got my calipers set and locked to uh, 5 sixteenths. Push it in. And at this point, we need the timing hole on the breather, which would be in pointer Get 
Yep. This must do. At this point, we want the time call of the breather to be in this little slot cut out here. And it's not. So what we need to do is I need to pull this forward, unmesh this helical gear that's actually behind this gear. There's a little rest on there. Oh, just some surface rust, probably because it's been fluctuating cold and hot days and this week. I'm gonna bring this around and there, now let me, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, this you can. Right here is a little hole. So when this gear meshes, it brings that hole around. So let's set this hole a couple in front. Let's try there. Put the other gear back on. These gears are, it's asymmetric in this direction and axially. There's four of these, oops, you didn't see shit. So it's asymmetric like this. We want this boss here to be inwards. And there's a bigger lobe on one of these or spline on one of these than there are in the other three. So this will only go on one way. So it won't go on like that, go on like that. It only goes on like that. So take our calipers again, still on 5 sixteenths. Move that in. Move that in until it bottoms. And we've missed that timing hole. We're advanced too far. It looks maybe by one tooth. So I'm going to go back out. And move this over one tooth. Now let's see if we at the distance we need. And there we are at 5 sixteenths with this surface off of this surface with this gear surface off of this surface. The timing hole is lined up in the little cutout here and the engine yep, has moved off of the inspection mark slightly. So you recenter that. Let's check it again. And a little bit, it's in there. Or is it right where we need it? Let's see. We're dead center on the inspection mark. And I think moving off a tooth won't work. So, yes. So you see how it's slightly to the right side of this cutout, but we're dead nuts on everything else, so that should be correct. If I move over a tooth, it will end up too far over one way or the other. So that should be correct. So we just need to take care to not let this these two gears unmesh now, the uh, gear behind this until we actually put the cam chest cover back on. And I'm gonna do one more. Dead center on timing. 5 sixteenths surface, and it's there. Yep, so that's correct. Sweet. So now, I'm gonna put the plug back in For that inspection hole. We can go ahead and install the rest of that cam chest. All right, pull these cut gears of here. So there's a timing mark on this front gear. So if you can see that, timing marks right on this tooth here. So first one we'll install is the intake, nope, 
first one we'll install is the in, yep, intake for the rear. So put a little assembly loop, take this shim off, put a little assembly loop here. Get it all around. Get a little lube on the cam lobe itself. Yep. All right, put this washer back in. Lube on the reverse side. A little lube in the bushing. There we go. Lift the lifter. What we want to do is it doesn't matter where this is really. We just gotta make sure those marks are lined up. So that's off. Oops, take it, move it over to here. There we go. Let me see that. Timing mark is right. Okay. Then we can take our exhaust for the rear. Same thing. Assembly lube on here. On the lobe. In the hole. For a backing washer on, shim washer. Get some on top of that as well. All right. So the timing mark on this one is right here. It's gonna line up with the one on this side. So one, two, lift, and that looks about correct. Oh, my mistake. I did that in the wrong order. So this cam actually fits behind the first one, so it's got to come out first. There we go. Make sure that it's clean. Yep, it's fine. So this cam goes in first. So we'll just put it in first and we'll set it about there. Now we can put the other cam in, this one has to go in as well. Because cams stagger in front and behind each other. So I'll lube up this one too. Lube all over the lobe. Yep. In the hole. Plenty of lube in the hole. You don't want to put that in dry like many things in life. All right. And put a little, start putting a little on the gears as well. I want to get some on these gear teeth. All right, lift this lifter. Here we go. Let's set this one to be, this has two on it, and these two should sit about, mm, about, yeah, like that. So one comes off this way, one comes off that way. I'm gonna put uh, a lube on the teeth on this one as well. It's not a problem. Let's do it for the back. All right. Lube on this bottom helical teeth. Should have done that before I timed it. That's okay. I'll lube this one. Here we go. All right, good loop on this one.
Okay, now we can try to time it. So it's going to be the trickiest because you're timing three at once here. So I think I'm off. Let's see. Set that so it's flat. Move around here. So I think I'm off one here and I'm dead nuts on this one. So check it out. Okay, with the lifter. All right. Yep, too far. Right? Nope, it's too far off. Yeah, I keep missing it. It's hard because the camera's in the way here. Let me just get it front. Get it moved. There we go. This one got off now. See how much of a juggling act this thing is. There we go. All right, there's through time now. So those lines line up. The hmm. something weird about these is that the lines never really line up all too well. They're very, I don't know. You look at them and you're like, yeah, that looks right. And then you're like, well, it looks a little off. And you flip it to like one tooth either direction and it doesn't work at all. So you have to play with them. To make sure that you're on what's the best option as far as the timing mark goes. Just looping up the last gear. This would be the front exhaust. You can tell the front exhaust from the uh, rear exhaust because it doesn't have the uh, helical drive for the uh, distributor. This just has a plain bushing on it. All right, but this only has one timing mark. It just lines up with that one. So it should be easy enough to just drop in. And eh, it's close. What does it look like if I put it a tooth off? Oop, forgot the washer too. That would have been bad. Get one tooth off, it's way out there. Yeah, that's right. There you go. And that's about as good as those get. And this idler gear has no timing marks whatsoever, so you just. Put it how you want. Make sure there's plenty of lube on them. Lube on the surface. And just make sure it's the right direction. See, that's the wrong direction. It actually fits flat here. You know. Here we go. 
that's pretty much all there is to it to time up these 45 Harley engines. I'm just going to go through now, put low lube on these. I'm going to clean this gasket surface and we can button it up. Wash my hands, and then we can work on buttoning it up. All right, I'm gonna go around now. Just make sure there's no lube, grease, or oil, or anything on this gasket surface, especially on the bottom where it likes to drip. It's this one right here. This one right here, this uh, hole, that's for the flutter valve. So you wanna make sure that you get just a little of the seal, but you don't want a glob in there to accidentally clog the flutter valve. this around and yeah I didn't rub off all the ones on the back side so it's good here on the oil passage I'm gonna be a little diligent skip some extra there remove some of that so it doesn't get dislodged so some loose in the hole there there we go because in this little crescent here this open one and this little one uh 
span that. So, here we are. All right, looks good. Surface is clean, so let's put it on the dowels first. Try very hard not to let it touch anything internal. And I don't know why it's sticking up that high. Oh, I see there's a little ridge up there. That's fine. I'm gonna remove that. Hold on. Let's see. That's just like so. And barely pushes against anything. I'm gonna clip that last top quarter off right uh right here because it's unsupported i just saw here we go so on the dowels there we go there we are and just seat it down all the way You see now it's not uh, sticking out so far and supported. All right, I lubed up all the bushings on the cam holder. This for this piece, uh, you just want that to be free. You, know, you push it down and it just returns. And I've cleaned the whole passage away. We'll put the breather tube on after. So this surface, this surface actually needs a little sparkling right here around the flutter valve. Let me spot clean that. Okay. That should be good. So our timing's still good, everything's set. She's all in, doing that timing in, and yes, yeah, the right this hasn't moved at all, so we'll just lift it up onto the dowels. Get these lugs in. go and start tapping to seat it there we go all good all right we'll just put the screws in and then that's the cam chest done Right. Now with my little handheld impact. Just gonna give them a good hit. They don't back out. Good. Fine. Okay. 
There we are. There we have it. That's the cam chest timed and uh, buttoned back up. Wow, it's really starting to look like a motor again. So now we can actually put the uh, oil pump on. So let's grab the gasket for that. All right, here we are. All right, pull out the oil pump. Still clean, hasn't pulled any rust, which is good. It turns freely. So what I want to do is I want to get the right gasket for this and actually, there we go. So there's some of the gaskets in my set. Here it is. And actually I believe in this set they have two. Yeah, they do. I have two. So it looks like the only difference is this uh, cutout here. Here, I'm, I'm gonna go uh, check, check that. All right, I just went through my resources. This is the one I want. I don't know why there's two in the kit, but there's one here with a little pointer. There's one with just two holes here. And there's one with a slot and two holes. We want the one with just the two holes. So this is the one we're gonna use. Take this down, grab some of that gasket, and just coat it. Over. All right, take the pump apart for one final cleaning. It's all good. Yep. So now we're just gonna give it a little lube up, and then we can put it all together. So same shit as before, just some similar lube. Right in the middle. Yeah, that's way too much. There. There we go. Just drop it in the hole. Cook the walls, the bottom especially. Just a neighbor throwing trash away. Here we go. All right. We can drop our rotor in. Seat it in the a within the uh, eccentric hole. Here we go. Put our springs in. Little. There we go. A little. little Lube on the springs, this will all get oil eventually. All up the blocks. There we go. Now we just oop, push it in. And of course, it's slippery as all heck. There we go. There we are. All right, we wash the hands off and get the gasket on it. Get 
that lube off of these areas here. I'm just using like brake cleaner, carb cleaner, just some solvent to get that glob of oil off. Sweet. All right, now we'll focus up to the body here on the uh, main block. Ooh. Give it you. There we are. All right. Go grab the gasket. We already coated both sides. Oops. This should go this way. Right over, and there's two small dowels. Oop. Did I do anything? Come on. There. There's two small dowels right here and right here. You want to make sure to get it over those as well. And make sure that. This is clean. Yep, as clean as it needs to be. There you go. Get it over those dowels. It's tight on these, which is good. A little ex excess on these. off of that there you go and that's pretty good all right I can take the pump it goes in uh, this orientation here start putting it on Check something. Put it on the wings, get it on the pins, and now those little ears you see. Yeah. Should have showed you before you put it on. So these two little dogs right here that come out and they're attached to the camshaft, and these need to fit in the slot here. To be able to drive the pump. It'll engage and actually turn when the engine's turning. So what you want to do is you want to put this on and just turn the engine over until those fit in. And something's wrong. Something's wrong. No, I think I had it. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, I had it. Yeah, I turned it over, I did grab it. There we go. So now it actually is sit all the way. It's uh, seated all the way on. And now we can attach the hardware. All right, I just double checked it. Each one of these gets a split washer. And one of these didn't have one when it came off, so I'm just gonna use a new one. And the way these go is bolt gets some split washer as well and it's the only one that actually goes through the short one you see the two sizes here is offset nuts this one short one goes up here 
A long one goes over here. And then the just the normal nut goes over here. And I'm not really sure why that is. Why would you put the long one all the way over there? There's versions of these where they're double stepped. There's another uh, check valve right here, so if that's stepped up, then you do need this. But in any case, these are just nuts, so I'm actually going to swap them around to what seems a little more sensible to me. So nothing... I don't want it to get caught on anything. So I'm going to flip it so the nut is actually over here. The tallest one is up high. And then the next short one is down here. And it's not the official placement, but it'll work just fine. They're just they're all the same thread. But if you want the official placement, you do the other way that I had a, just had originally. Alright, and then I'm going to drive those in with a 3 eighths. Oh, no. Not 3 eighths. What is that? 7 sixteenths? Yep. Then we get a ratchet. Ratchet. All right, there we go. Now we have the feed oil pump installed back onto the engine. This thing is really starting to take shape now. Now to keep things from falling in, I'm actually gonna put a cover over this and the needle that would go here as well. I'm getting a replacement because that was broken. Uh, so I do need to get a replacement for that. In addition, there's one down here. And this is where the oil uh, pressure unit goes. I'm still cleaning it, so I'm going to tape that over as well. Just because I don't know if that one's going to be any good, so I'm not going to clean it and then reinstall it right right now. And same for down here, just for the inlet on, or for the outlet for the uh, return pump. I'm just going to cover that with a piece of tape as well, just so nothing gets in there. And it keeps the moisture out. Use whatever tape you want, but electrical tape always seems to work pretty well for me. Comes off pretty clean. Yeah, it ain't pretty, but it's supposed to be. It's just supposed to keep things from falling into the passageways. Yeah, it's a little cold right now, so it's not gonna sticking very well. There we go. All right, and that's pretty much all the lower end done. We do need to put the distributor on and the uh, generator back. I'm still getting those cleaned up. But besides that, most of that's cleaned up now. You want to be really careful. Don't let things drop into these cavities now because then it's just going to be a huge fucking pain if something drops into the cavities here for the generator or for the distributor. You're going to have to fish it out or you're going to have to take the whole thing apart and get it out of there. So... Like always, just cover it with a towel, make sure nothing falls back in, and I'll go clean the rest of the parts. So I have the breather tube over here, all cleaned up. And the breather tube is simply just a tube with a, with a plate on it. The tube fits up like so, and there's a gasket between the surface and the tube. 
And what that does is it makes the breather cavity not at this surface, but up here. So what happens is that an oil mist gets drawn out by the uh, end of the generator and that seeps down into here. And with each pull of the crankcase, the flutter valve, which is located in this chamber right here, will pull that oil back into the crankcase. So it turns that oil mist into liquid oil again, and then pulls it back into the crankcase to get picked up by the uh, return pump. So this breather cap helps keep the oil just sitting around here and keeps it from just falling straight out of the engine. If you remove this, all that would happen is that that oil mist would fall straight out of the engine and eventually you'd run out of oil because it would just all sooner or later leave. So this does have to be oil tight. So the gasket goes on the surface. We're gonna coat both sides of the gasket in our uh, gasket sealer. Then we just put it up in and it's just four simple screws that hold it in. So we're gonna prep that gasket and then we'll put it in. All right, here's the gasket coated and it only goes on one way so you can figure out pretty easily. You just slip that gasket over. Just grab one of these screws or two. Uh, grab one that fits better. Fits better. And just slip your tube up. In and the tube also only goes in one way. If you put it in the other way, it's gonna obviously not fit. So there's no real wrong way to do this without something being obvious. <laughs> and each one of these uh, screws gets a little spring washer to it. Hold it in place, and it's just a simple flathead. There you go. You can wipe off any external squeeze out that comes, but that's it. Here's the breather cap. So theoretically, once the engine's sealed, once every part is in, the only open tube is through the intake, through the exhaust, and through this breather tube. Everything else should be covered. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Hey y'all. I thought well, we had the engine out actually. On the table, we could install the sprocket gear. We'll just remove the nut. I just cleaned it. I just cleaned the seat on both of them. And get another wipe down just in case. But this is pretty easy, so it goes really quick. So you just take your woodruff key, and this key has a circular side and a flat side. Put the circular side down onto the shaft like that. And then you just take your sprocket and line the key up and just get it up without knocking the key all the way off the seat. And hard to see. Yep. Dang. We'll just get a flathead screwdriver behind it to hold it in place while we get this on. There we go.
sure your key isn't touching on the seal on the back. Yeah, it looks good. There, hold on. Screwdriver, pick. There we go. Now we'll just put the nut back on and we'll just tighten it with the impact to drive that up onto the taper. That key doesn't hold it from moving actually. The uh, taper holds it from moving. And then the nut just keeps the taper from backing off. Plug this up. All right. Get my hand on the con rod up here so it doesn't move. I just want to go, go like that, so I'll grab this one. Oh, this is a 1 and 16th inch socket. And that should be about good. There we go. That should hold it. And it's that easy to put the sprocket on. A lot harder if you don't have an impact, but that easy if you do.